Pipe USA from New York Comic Con, and I'm here with the Hasbro Grand Team. Introduce yourself to the camera. Hi, I'm Ryan in marketing. I am Dan in marketing. And we're here to talk about maybe one of the biggest horrible things I've ever seen. Uh, Giant Man, the very aptly named Giant Man. Yeah. So, so one thing I want to know is through, how did you come up with Giant Man? Because you had done, you know, with the Sentinel and you did the. Uh, so obviously those were, you know, much larger scale, you know, concept figures. So was it always like who's who's really big we can do? I mean, well, Marvel is primarily a figural-based world, right? They have vehicles, they have locations, like all great IPs, but the heart and soul of Marvel is their amazing characters, and we've seen that with the successes of the Blackness and Sentinel, and we wanted to have a hero to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, uh, so that you had something on the shelf that could actually stand a chance to punch Blackness in the face and, uh, and come back from it in one piece. And that's what we kind of uh, have here. Um, we have the 60th anniversary of Avengers this year, and with that tie-in, we thought it was the perfect time to do a classic Giant Man. So, you know, we just kind of have him on display today, celebrating all of the history of uh, Giant Man with some of the different toys that Hasbro's made in the past and Toy Biz has made in the past, all different fun examples of, uh, you know, previous versions. And now you have uh, our centerpiece, you know, the potential next uh, HasLab with uh, our current Giant Man campaign. 24 inches tall, it's $200, which is great when you consider Galactus was 400 just a couple of years ago. So half the price of Galactus, but just eight inches shorter, so come on. We've got, him on, we've got the Toy Biz uh, Build-A-Figure, which is an awesome figure back in the early 2000s, but it's been you know, 16, 17 years since that figure came out, and not a lot of current collectors might have access to that, right? Yeah. So this does two things. It makes the character, and that's what I was talking about, a classic Avenger, one of the founding members of the team in Hank Pym, Giant Man. You know, he's accessible now, and this has that to anyone who wants it, pretty much, right, by October 23rd, and it fits kind of uh, in the modern uh, six-inch Legends collection that we've been doing well, the past couple of years. Well, it's basically just a team on Yeah, he scales really nicely in the collection of the figures. So, what goes into designing something like, where do you start dimension wise? It's obviously like, you know, it's a, a, you know, it's a, a variable dimension that you make it something like this. Um, so, how do you nail down exactly where, you know, you should go to yeah, um, well, Marvel's a unique thing. They kind of have a, they have a look and, and feel to their proportions in the Marvel Universe. So we start with looking at, like, the guidelines that Marvel puts forward. And then we take that and we incorporate it in this instance into a base clean body, which is the first time we've ever done this. Everything we've done to this point has been big, giant, armored, funky things, right? But this is our first kind of body-suited hero. And as we began developing it and breaking him apart for articulation to make him the most posable, playable figure we've ever done at this scale, we realized really quickly that without a lot of extra attention to detail and some love to put in, he looked a little bit basic, right? So every piece of this figure has different texturing, um, seams, zippers, uh, logos, all tucked in, hidden in some cases across this entire figure so that when you see it in person, it all feels like it's a legit, real thing brought to life. You know, on the six inch scale, there's some of those details sometimes can't get as much of a focus, but on this size, if you don't have all of that extra little bit of love put into it, it would really jump out as it didn't look finished. So it was a it was a much longer process than a typical figure, but we're very pleased with it. And it seems like the community seeing this in person this weekend is also very much, uh, you know, positive uh, feels and vibes for this guy. I was just saying to someone the other day, the same sort of concept, like when you get the press release about it or you see an email about it or you see it on a website, it's one thing. To come here and actually see and be able to, you know, to be able to figure out the proportions in your head, like to see it in front of you and see how big it actually is, it makes it like a whole nother level of impressive. Um, it's a really you want to talk about the um, the different levels, um, the stretch goals, and time? Sure. So, so the base offering is 10,000 backers by October 23rd, in the day. Uh, first tier unlock is at 
12,000, and that's going to be an alternate zombie faceplate and two swappable zombie, zombie antenna pieces. So it's going to work with that same head that Dwight has been talking about. Um, and it's just going to swap in as a faceplate to go with great with your other Marvel zombie legends. And then the second tiered unlock at 14,000 backers is a complete separate headpiece for the scrawl because we had to have his ears coming out the side and we couldn't have done that with the uh, normal helmet design. So that's a whole separate head, uh, very detailed. And on both of those, you know, Dwight can talk more about awesome sculpt, great paint, and um, just a really interesting new way to display kind of the villainous character. Yeah. Yeah, you, know. you, you can completely see, even from all the way over here, how impressive that it's Yeah, it, it's, it's, it was a lot of fun, and we made our color matching for the scrawl and our zombie match our uh, current zombies and our current scrawls in the line. So in case you are a collector that has some of those figures, if we get here, if all the crowd uh, tiers get unlocked, you know, those, those variations will fit in perfectly with your current pieces of your collection that are already of the alien or undead uh, worlds. No, it's just those two, so we're 10, 12, 14. That's fantastic. Amazing. So, if this one succeeds and goes on to the next one, what's the next really big character that you would like to make? Uh, let, us know your, let us know your thoughts. <laughs> so, if you had your choice. If I had my choice? Uh, like things fans food is something I know that some fans have been talking about. There was an old Hasbro Marvel Legends Big Fan Boom. I think we could do a very, a very impressive new, even larger one than the first one. But again, it's kind of like it's one step at a time. Each campaign informs the following campaign, so we won't be able to make any calls until Giant Man uh, stories are written on that one. And if, and if you had your favorite big character that you could make, a character from. I'd love to do a Celestial at some point, right? Like, even in the MCU, these Celestials were, like, they're shown as super huge, you know what I mean? Um, so if we ever had the opportunity, that'd be cool. For me, I personally would love to be able to tackle the Blackbird at some point in my life. Uh, but that would, might be a little bit too big, right? It might be... I wouldn't, I say, wouldn't fit in this... Yeah, I was going to say, like, you're talking true scale, not like the, the, the X-97. Yeah, yeah, so... Yeah. Which is also impressive. You, have you added your, your I, 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 would, I would dip back into the X universe, and I got three things that are constantly cycling through my head: either an X ninety seven styled Sentinel, uh, Apocalypse and his Horsemen, or Cameron Hodge from Extinction Agenda. Those are, the, those, are the, those are the three X things that I would like to see. That's awesome. And if you'd like to see any of those happen, it starts by supporting Giant Man. So uh, you can go to Haslab and support Giant Man right now. Um, it's an incredible figure. It deserves to be made. Please, please go support it. That's, that's all I can say. It's, it deserves to be made. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, guys, very much. Our pleasure. For Toy Hype USA, this is Rob Hall from New York Comic Con. Again, fastlife.com. Go support Giant Man. Well, not the.